All right, so what we're looking at today is factors affecting infiltration. Factors affecting infiltration. All right, so um, with the water cycle, condensation is the process where uh, clouds form. When those little water droplets get too big, they fall from the sky's precipitation, hits the ground, a few things can happen to it. Some of it plants will take in, some of it will run off the surface. Um, some of it will evaporate. And the other thing that can happen is the water could soak in the ground, which is what infiltration is, right? Um, so we're looking at today are some of the things that affect uh, how much this water soaks in the ground. So first and foremost um, is slope, all right? Uh, if the land is steep versus if, if the land is flat. So let's say I have one, a hill that's kind of flat on one side and steep on the other side. Right. Now, uh, the rain falls in the area. Now, on the steeper side, with a higher slope, what's going to happen is more of the water is going to run off and only a little bit is going to infiltrate the ground. Where the land is flatter, what's going to happen is more of it's going to infiltrate the ground and less of it's going to run off. So the steeper the slope, the less infiltration you have, the, the flatter the slope or the smaller the slope, the more infiltration you have. All right, so when the land's flatter, more of the water can soak in, and the land's steeper, less of the water can soak in the ground. Right. <coughs> uh, now, next uh, is porosity. All right now there has to be a place in the ground for the water to go so porosity is how much space is there in in the ground so if i had like 100 milliliters of dirt that had of that 100 milliliters of dirt um 30 milliliters of that was empty space between the, the dirt particles that would be like 30 percent porosity because 30 percent of that dirt would be filled with uh, empty space all right that's a porosity the percent of open space in the volume of material. Now, obviously, you have to have porosity for the water to soak in the ground. The bigger the porosity, the more empty space there is in the ground, the more the water can soak in because there's a place for it to go. If the ground only has like two or three percent porosity, then not very much water can soak in the ground because there's no place for it. So some of the things that affect porosity, uh, first off, shape. Uh, round compared to angular, uh, if I'm comparing those two, like A and B, round particles have more porosity than angular particles. And the reason being is with round particles, no matter what I do, you're always going to have those gaps between them. With angular particles like this one here, uh, what tends to happen is as they settle, they start to kind of fit together like puzzle pieces. And when they do that, um, that's going to cut down on the amount of empty space between it. So round particles, more porosity, angular particles, less porosity, all right? Uh, now, let's say I'm comparing A to C, the big round particles to small round particles. Now, if I were to ask you which one has more empty space between A and C, uh, you're probably going to say A, because you look at that one and you see those big empty spaces there. And this one here has got little empty spaces. However, um, size actually has no effect on porosity. Um, this one here and this one here both have the same amount of empty space. Um, what's different about them is this has big spaces, but there's only a few big spaces. This one has small spaces, but there's a whole bunch of them. So if I add up all these small spaces and I add up these two big spaces, they actually work out to be exactly the same. So size does not affect porosity. Now, um, if I take A and C and I mix them together to make D, all right, now what I have is things that are sorted, because right, these are all the same size and these are all the same size. Um, these are mixed, these are unsorted, where I have different sizes mixed together. Size doesn't affect porosity, but sorting does. Because um, what happens is if I mix little ones together with big ones, is the little ones fill in the spaces between the big ones. And as a result, you can have less pore space in there. So sorted particles, ones that are uniform, like that and that, are gonna have more porosity 
where unsorted particles or have a bunch of mixed particle sizes together, um, that's going to have less porosity, right? Because the little ones don't have spaces between the big ones. All right, um, packing. All right, uh, so let's say I had some sand right here and I wanted to decrease the porosity in the sand. What I could do is pack it down like this and push on it, push on it, push on it and squeeze it together so there's less space there. Uh, when I squeeze it together and squish the particles closer together, that's gonna eliminate some of the empty space between the particles, all right? So if I closely pack it or tightly pack it, I'm gonna have less porosity, less empty space. And if I wanted to make it so that there was more porosity, what I could do is I could kind of fluff it up. I could kind of fluff it up and by fluffing it up, I'm, I'm making the volume of uh, sand bigger. That's going to create more empty space between the particles. So if I loosely pack it, like if I fluff it up, that's going to make more porosity. All right, permeability, uh, the rate at which water passes through material. All right, um, so when if I dumped water onto these guys right here, uh, the water would not travel the same speed throughout. Some of these would travel faster, other ones would travel slower. And the main thing that determines that is the size of the particles. Um, so if I poured water on this one A and I poured water on this one C, in A, the water would shoot right down to the bottom very quickly. Whereas with C, there's smaller particles, the water would go down at a slower rate. The smaller the particles, the more time it takes for the water to get through it. And that's what permeability is. Permeability is the speed or the rate at which water travels through material. So big particles, it goes fast. Small particles, it goes slow. Right. Uh, next, capillary reaction, upward movement of water against gravity. So imagine I had two puddles, all right? One of the puddles, I took a shovel full of gravel and I put it on top of the puddle. And the other one, I took a shovel full of sand and I put it on top of the puddle. And I scooped up the sand and I scooped up the gravel, all right? One of those two would soak up more water than the other one. And the one that would soak up more water is the sand, all right, compared to the gravel. Now that, with the sand on top of the puddle, the fact that the water is going up into the sand, that is what capillary action is. Right? Capillary action is the upward movement of water against gravity. Now, smaller particles do a better job of getting the water to move up than bigger particles. And the reason being is smaller particles have smaller spaces between them, narrower spaces, larger particles have wider spaces, and the narrower the space is, the easier it is for the water to work its way up. So like if I had, if I had a pool of water right here, all right, like that, and I put a wide tube in it, and I put a narrow tube in it like that, all right, uh, in both cases, the water would go up. However, in the big, in the wider tube, the water might only go up to that level in the narrow tube, the water might go up to that level right there. The narrower the tube, the higher the water goes up. Right? That's how plants are able to have water soak up from the ground and go up a plant or go up a tree, is plants have a bunch of very, very narrow tubes in them. In the very narrow tubes, the water is able to go up through them by the process of capillary action. Right? So smaller particles, smaller spaces, the water goes up better. Larger particles, larger spaces, the water doesn't go up as much. Right. Um, another thing that affects how much water soaks in the ground is whether or not the ground is saturated. Right. Um, let's say it rained on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then on Friday, you got a, you know, a fair amount of rain. Well, that rain on Friday, even if it's not that heavy, it's probably not going to soak in the ground. It's probably not going to infiltrate the ground. Because if it's raining the previous four days, the ground is probably saturated. The ground is probably all filled up with water already. So any rain that you get in that lap, that fifth day, uh, would eventually just flow off the surface. Now, if on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, it did not rain, it was like sunny outside, if I get that same amount of rain on Friday, then probably most of that rain will soak into the ground 
because if it hasn't rained in a number of days, the ground's probably not saturated. So that means there's places in the ground for the water to go. So the more saturated the ground is, the less infiltration will take place. So if the ground's already filled up with water, you're not gonna have much new water soaking in there. Okay. Um, lastly, water retention, uh, water sticking to particles. Right. So let's use this guy for example. Right. Um, so let's say there's a little opening at the bottom of that, okay. like this. And what I did is I took 100 milliliters of water and I poured 100 milliliters of water through here and then I let, it let it drain out the bottom. Right. Now, if I pour in 100 milliliters, the amount I get out the bottom is not going to be 100 milliliters. The amount, to get at the, the amount I get at the bottom might be like 70 milliliters is all that comes out the bottom. Because right. what happened to the other 30 milliliters is it sticking to the uh, particles that are in there. Right. So water retention is water sticking to the particles. Right. Now, I do the same thing over here for the bigger particles. All right. I pour in 100 milliliters, pour it into there, let the water drain out. Over here, I might get like 90 milliliters that come out at the bottom. And the reason being is with the bigger particles, I have less surface area, so there's less place for the water to stick to, so more of it to get to the bottom. Whereas this guy right here, the smaller particles have more surface area for the water to stick to, so when I pour the water in there, less water is going to get out the bottom. So water retention is how much water there is, there is sticking to the particles, and smaller particles with more water retention because they have more surface area. Now, um, what happens to the water when it gets into the ground? All right, so what happens to the water when it gets into the ground? All right. but just like if I have a beaker full of beads here and I pour water on the top of it, you know, the water flows through the beads, um, but then it gets to the bottom of the beaker and it can't go through the bottom of the beaker because glass is impermeable. The glass does not let water go through it. So then the water starts building up from there. So I put food coloring in the water so you can see where the water is. Well, basically the same thing happens with the ground too. Uh, when it rains and stuff, water soaks into the ground and it goes down, 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 down until it hits a layer of rock that the water can't go through. So the impermeable rock means that the layer of rock where the water can't go through. So that'd be the equivalent of the glass in the bottom of a beaker. Uh, so from that point on, the ground starts filling up with water, right? So I have this zone down here where all the pore spaces are filled with water. So like in my example right here, that would be that zone right there where all the pore spaces are filled with water. We call that zone where the pore spaces are filled with water the zone of saturation. Right. Now, up on top here, I have a layer where all the pore spaces are filled with air. All right. So in my example here, it's the white part. There's no water between those particles. It's just air between those particles. That is known as the zone of aeration. Right? Now the boundary between the zone of saturation and the zone of aeration, where those two meet, that is called the water table. So on my example here, right there would be where the water table is. Right? So below the water table, all the pore spaces are filled with water. That's what the black represents. Above the water table, all the pore spaces are filled with air. And then that line right there is the water table. All right, that line right there is the water table. Now, um, significance of the water table. 
Well, how you get a well is if I drill a hole down deep enough, um, that hole will fill up with water to the level of the water table. All right, so this will all be water. Then you could, you know, an old timey well, you could have a rope with a bucket and put it down there and scoop the water out. Or more modern wells, you have a, a pump and it'll pump the water out of that hole. Right? Now, if there's a hole or depression over here, um, that hole or depression can fill up with water to that level too. Uh, that's one way in which streams can, or that's one way in which ponds can fill up with water. If I have a depression and the depression fills up with water to the level of the water table, that's one of the ways in which way ponds can fill up. Now, if this is a stream valley that cuts down to the water table, what would happen is water would flow from the stream or from the ground into the stream channel. And that's how like some um, streams can flow, even if it hasn't rained for several weeks or some streams that still have water in it. That's because the stream channel is getting groundwater flowing into it like that. Okay. Now, um, let's say it hasn't rained in quite a while and the level of the water table goes down to there. All right. Well then, the well water would be farther down. The well water would be right there. This pond or stream level would be significantly lower as well. Okay. Um, let's say it got even drier. And the level of the water table was down here. Then that well would go dry. And then, then that stream would go dry as well. Now, if there's... You know, there could be some other guy like over here who has like a deeper well, right? If there's some guy over there who had a deeper well, that guy's well could still get water in it. So that's why you're better off having a deeper well because it's less likely to go dry. Um, now, all this groundwater stuff's connected. So like what the guys over here is doing can affect the person over here. So, just like this little demonstration here, if I stuck a straw in there and started sucking water out of it, the level of the water table here would go down. The same thing could happen here, where like if this guy started pumping lots and lots of water out of the ground, he can make the whole level of the water table for the other people drop down too. So it's all connected, it's all connected. All right, all right so that's some of the things that affects uh, infiltration and um, what the underwater, groundwater scene is like here. All right.